We want to talk about de-extinction. This is basically Jurassic Park coming to life. Uh, dinosaurs are coming back. Yeah, that's right. And not just in Jurassic Park 4. Uh, de-extinction is the catch-all uh, term that scientists use for the process of breeding and reintroducing extinct species uh, like the woolly mammoth, the passenger pigeon, the saber-toothed tiger, and uh, hopefully my favorite, the dodo bird. Uh, and let's take a look at some video and then we're going to talk about it. Are we playing God with the extinction? Did we play God when we drove most of these species to extinction? Why should we bring these species back? It varies with the species. You know, it was entirely human efforts that, that made it extinct. Extinct species and endangered species are part of one continuum. One of the important questions, of course, if you do contemplate in a project like this, a de-extinction project, of bringing an animal like that back, what are you going to do with it? That's actually one of the more difficult questions because, um, you know, why do we want to clone the mammoth? And can you clone it? Because as we say, cloning one animal or bringing back one extinct animal, that's interesting, but that's not a population. How do we introduce genetic variation? If we could get this animal back, the throne for that king of beasts is still warm. I don't think we'll bring it back to life. Maybe that will happen one day in the future. But what we can do is learn a lot more about it by studying its genetic makeup. If it looks like a passenger pigeon, is it a passenger pigeon? If it behaves like one, is it a passenger pigeon? Or does it have to be an exact duplicate of the genome? And the first goal we would have is say, well, let's get it back into its natural environment. Let it restore the balance in that ecosystem. When a creature goes from rare to common, and you watch that happen, you get engaged with its sort of fight to survive. And when you see a creature go from extinct to rare to common, I think people are just going to be cheering it on the whole way. All right, mainly what I think we learned there is that I personally trust older men with accents to teach me about uh, dinosaurs and extinct animals. The young guy was like, yeah, yeah. all right. Um, okay, so before we get to the, some of the science and this stuff, Desi, I'm gonna start with you here. If we can even do this, is this a good idea? I was expecting Jeff Goldblum to be in there and just warning us like in Jurassic Park, nothing good can come out of this. <laughs> yeah, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly? I know, yeah, we have seen this movie before and it didn't end well, at least for Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that they bring up many good points. The idea that humanity, because of our spread across the earth and our impact on habitats and resources and our own extraction of species just for our own use around the world, I think that does show that we have made the highest pressure on species extinction. We are the reason that there is a huge amount of extinction going on right now. And the idea that we can play God to bring these back is, I think, a distraction. Personally, my own personal opinion is that it is a distraction from conservation um, because we won't be able to bring back the full species as is. And we can get to more on the science in a moment, yeah. but you know, we wouldn't be bringing back that exact species. The environment that we have now is different from when those species existed. So right now we're just sort of uh, you know, laying waste to the earth and laying waste to these species and then trying to bring them back without actually doing the hard work of not doing the stuff that's killing them off in the first place. Yeah. That's the hard part. Malcolm, is there any chance that something like this ends well? I mean, have we all just seen too many movies about this kind of stuff and too much sci-fi where it's like, this goes horrifically awry and a dinosaur ends up parading through Los Angeles? That, that, well, that may not be the worst thing in the world, but... There's like, there's like a 75% chance of that happening. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think it's interesting if you, I mean, I did some research. We all I think, uh, read a, a little bit more about this than we knew beforehand. And one of the stories was about uh, the uh, Iberian ibex. I don't know if you read about this, but it's, it's in, uh, in Europe, this antelope-like creature that they are a goat or something. No, it's a goat, I guess, like a goat. They created it, they cloned it, and they, they had uh, like hundreds of eggs to make this one. And it, this one was born, and it had an extra lung, and it was pathetic and horrible, and died within 10 minutes in the arms of the researcher. And it sounded like this horrible, horrible story. And I thought, yeah, let's do some more of that. It sounds <laughs> great. Uh, well, I mean, what, what Desi's saying, I mean, the question is whether you, you can do this and also focus on conservation and try to restore the earth. I mean, we are destroying the earth and destroying the habitat for ourselves, and we're going to focus on bringing back the saber-toothed tiger. I mean, what, you know, that's rearranging deck chairs in the Titanic or, or putting out new deck chairs, maybe. Right. And uh, the question is whether it's a zero-sum game, and I don't think it is necessarily, but it, the reality is that we are trying to reintroduce these animals, into, or potentially reintroduce these animals into an environment where the 
reason that they are no longer here is us. And what we need to do, if we really want to save these creatures, is to remove the factor that is destroying the environment, that is killing off all these animals, which is us. As long as we're still here, it's going to be tough for them to survive, even if we can do it. Right. Brett, help me take the other side on this for a second. It seems to me that scientific progress is what humanity is all about. And if we can do this, we almost have a right, and it's almost incumbent upon us to do this. So crazy talk or not? <laughs> I'm probably crazy talk. There's, there's definitely two categories of extinct animals. There's the ones that we killed because we're terrible as people. <laughs> and I picture the whole cloning of, of endangered animals discussion will lead to a scene where some guy is like in a tractor and he's tearing down a forest. Someone's like, that was the last, you know, diamond spangled sparrow you killed. And he's like, ah, just put it in an ice box. We'll bring it back for, to life, you know? Yeah. And the other ones are like the saber toothed tiger and the woolly mammoth. The most frustrating thing about this to me is that those ones are, you know, they had their shot, you know, <laughs> and they died, and the, but unfortunately, those are the coolest ones that I want Absolutely, back. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and the question is, like, do are we playing God? You know, we were playing God when we killed them off. We are now playing un-God no, we were to playing, bring... Well, we were playing the Old Testament God when we killed them off right. by now destroying them. The now we were like, God Jesus is here, come on, you right. know, water into wine, <laughs> well, everybody's listen, friendly. I, I don't know if you guys are implying that dinosaurs and humans uh, live together. I don't think that's what you're saying. Maybe. But so, I don't think it had anything to do with humans. But well, humans well, and mammoths, humans and mammoths did, uh, did exist together. I, I mean, that. mammoths only went extinct like 4,000 years ago I, or something. I love how they plan to bring the mammoth back, which is to use an African African elephant as a surrogate. Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine that being poor. that African elephant and you give birth and you look down and there's a man and you're what the hell came out of my body? Yeah, well what about the dead elephant who goes over to the mom elephant and is like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. 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 Where, where were you yeah. nine months ago? How were long you? did it take a, yeah. an elephant to get there? 18, 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. 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 22 months. Yeah, that's right. All right, so if we can... Star chaser. If we can remove all of our... Clearly, we have some issues as humans, or at least the four of us do. If we can remove that, that we are going to wreck this whole thing, and we could get them to an island, and we can get all the right vegetation and all that stuff, would you guys be okay with that? If it could truly exist in, in a vacuum? Well, we wouldn't actually be creating those species. Uh, we should you know, point out that with the science that we're talking about here, we're talking about taking the nuclei, if they can find existing nuclei, from these extinct species and inserting them into the uh, an egg of a surrogate or a close relative species. Right. So whatever comes out of that, it would take many generations to develop what might even be close to the full genome of these extinct species. So we're actually talking about creating new novel species, essentially. This is a very close kind of species, but not the exact thing. These are kind of like, they're basically clones. So then we have other issues, like you say, you know, like can we create an island where they will have the exact same habitat that they had at the same same time, but they have the uh, mutual species that come along with it, like we all have gut microbes and, and other bacteria that also help us survive as organisms, you know, would we be able to recreate those as well? Is it even right to bring in a species when there won't be any others of them? Right. You know, you don't have a population, as mentioned in the video. You only have one, maybe you make two, but you're not gonna have the genetic biological diversity, I'm sorry, the genetic diversity to ensure that that population can continue. So. I think it's a great idea as far as understanding the genome and understanding genetics and under, you know, how that can further help us to identify ways to protect the species that we have. You know, but otherwise, I just I don't think it's really a good idea. I think it takes away the resources that we need for conservation. Right. Don't you guys think, though, that the playing God part of this seems a little uh, like a hollow argument against it? Because humans aren't supposed to fly. We jump in planes. I mean, everything we do scientifically, if you were to say play God, well, that means you should get a disease and just die. I mean, everything we do uh, is against that notion. But for some reason, it does have a little weight here, I think. Well, I think that the... The goal here is to do this. The scientists want to do it. It's neat, it's cool, and I think collectively, we feel guilty. You know, like you, you read about, you hear about the, oh, you know, the Tasmanian tiger, the last one died in 1935 or whatever, and you're like, oh, we're so terrible, humans are so terrible, the passenger pigeons, there used to be, I mean, the passenger pigeons used to fly for flocks of millions of them, darkening the skies for days and days in the Midwest as they flew overhead, and now we just, and we just killed them all, well, I mean, we, but we think, we yes. think we did it, you know, like, and we feel guilty about it, but I didn't do it personally, right. so I don't really, I mean, maybe Brett, I don't know if you were involved, I but. I did it, because I, you know, <laughs> nothing sounds worse than just like, oh, God, I wish I could see the sky, were it not for these billions 
millions of pitch. Oh, poop, poop, poop. Yeah. But the thing but is, we do it now. I mean, don't yeah, we do yeah, it now? We absolutely play God, and we, we want to do this. It's a neat thing to do. We feel guilty about it. We'd like to do it. And so we look for reasons why we should do it. And I don't think that, that, I don't think the reasons that, we, that they talk about doing it are really that legitimate. I think when Desi's point is right, that we have a lot more important things to focus on. But I think it's going to happen no matter what. Even, there's no way it's going to be stopped, because somebody somewhere is going to want to do it. I was thinking about this, like, even if we banned it in the United States for some reason, internationally people will do it. There will be some university somewhere that wants the prestige associated with it, so they'll fund it, and it's going to happen. There will and be some corporation somewhere that wants to own money that it. genetic, de that yeah. genome, that wants to, you know, create this particular, recreate this particular animal or plant because they can then use it to create some medicine that they can make right. billions of dollars off of. So there are a lot of unintended consequences that can come out of it. Couple questions. Yes. <laughs> How the hell did the carrier pigeon get on the list with the woolly mammoth and the saber-toothed tiger? <laughs> it's good a PR. Just come pa on. Passenger pigeon or the carrier pigeon? Passenger, passenger pigeon. Passenger. Oh yeah, total big difference. Um, <laughs> I, I want, we all, anyone who says this is not a vanity project yeah. is fooling themselves. This is absolutely vain. And it's also that we can create that the, these extinct, recreate these extinct species so we can see them for a second and go, awesome, woolly yeah. mammoth, let's get lunch. <laughs> You know? but, and the thing is, will it look better than CGI? I mean, Jurassic Park 4 is coming out. Those things are going to look pretty realistic. You know what I mean? And we're going to create one that has a limp and, as you said, has a bad lung, needs to be carried around. It's like... Yeah, I mean, that's what it's going to be, and we're going to have to deal with that. Well, I think yeah. there, there are potentially benefits that we don't know. And they talk about, like, you know, if we restore these ecosystems and restore passenger pigeons to the Midwest and we, as the forests come back, I mean, it's possible. Uh, you know, increase the genetic diversity around the world, even if they are sort of new species. And... Uh, plus, maybe we get to hunt Neanderthals. Yeah. That would be fun. I mean, right? I mean, like, a, like, like traditional man did. Uh, but that's that's the one that I found most intriguing is the idea that we could actually bring back Neanderthals. And uh, the question being, who's going to gestate <laughs> the yeah. next, the it's first? Let me out of here! Yeah. Ah. It's going to be a, a hell of a, 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 a reality show, right? Yeah. The Neanderthals oh, living next on Wall Street or something. But no, but the, I bet Octomom is already attached to yeah. the first reality <laughs> show to produce a Neanderthal offspring, and then subsequent. I mean, talk about your object of, you know, interest as a society, like watching the Neanderthal grow up. That would be something. That oh my God! Okay, well let's just stop for a second. Yeah, so, okay. Just calm us down here. <laughs> just remember that. And then we hunt it. That yeah. There are <laughs> issues with uh, with bringing back a Neanderthal, which first of all, the scientist who you know the big media went around that said he was looking for an adventurous woman to uh, be a surrogate mom for Neanderthal. He said that was absolutely not what he was saying. He was just positing if you wanted to do this, then you would need an adventurous woman to do that. And he says absolutely not. It shouldn't be done because you know these are human ancestors, and therefore right. you have ethical considerations about whether it is right to bring a human ancestor into the world in which it would be the only one, uh, you know, into a society that it is not prepared in order to survive in, and a sentient being of sort that, you know, that just has wrong written all over it. So you oh, can't go ethics. hunt them. <laughs> what, what are you going to do with them? But it is interesting, like, you could be birthing your own great 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 And then you want to go kill them. Well, I mean, I thought you would have your reasons at that point. Give it sticks. Catch and release. We're going to catch and release. Catch and release. We got you again, Neanderthal. All right, so He's just wearing like a big hat trying to blend in, but just his enormous pronounced brow is poking out the bottom of his fedora. Didn't ABC try to do a sitcom about this when they took the cavemen? Remember the cavemen from the Geico commercial? They had a sitcom for like two episodes. Yeah, two episodes is about as long. This doesn't bode well. Conversation is about trying things again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you See if go. we can do it better the second yes. time. Yes. So my final uh, question on this is: This seems to me like a really cool divergence in the scientific community because it seems like we're going to have half the people working on this kind of stuff and going back and bringing back extinct species, and the other half doing what I like a little bit more, which is working on the robots that ultimately are going to be our leaders. Uh -huh. uh, which side of that do you guys fall on? Are you more into the bringing back the dinosaurs or uh, kowtowing to the robots? I think I speak for the entire panel when I say robot dinosaurs. Ro <laughs> <laughs> I think we just, do you guys even have anything to add then? No. Robot dinosaurs. Bring them on, yeah. I'm, 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 with, I'm, with, uh, with, what's it? I'm with him. With him, that's my... I'm with my Neanderthal friend <laughs> over here.